Yeah. Hello, folks. Louisiana, Massachusetts, and Indiana are examining Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. King. Right there. Oh, look, right there. Ronald Terrio from Laplace, Louisiana. Eric. Ron Felter. Yeah, Ron Felter. I'm sorry. That's all right. Swiss. <laughs> Swiss. Oh, good. Swiss. And and uh, John Sharon from Indiana. So we have the South, the Midwest, and the Northeast, uh, which is no problem with Paps because it's one of those brands that's sold everywhere, you know. Um, and it always has been, you know, since probably over 100 years, except for that prohibition issue. Uh, that little issue. <laughs> Anybody got something they want to say about Paps before I give a little information? I feel really bad. What is it, what's the ABV in this beer again? <laughs> um, it's like five, four point three or something. Four point seven four to five point nine is what it says. Gotcha. So it's somewhere between uh, Budweiser and like your light style beers. Yes. Yeah, four point four point seven. So it's a uh, Miller High Life level. Yeah. It's a uh, they use six-row barley malt, the cheap barley malt, uh, corn syrup, not exactly a, a gourmet uh, thing. Uh, Pacific domestic hops blended with imported Yugoslavian variety, I guess from the Balkans. Uh, and fermented with a pure culture of yeast, and aged at high gravity, cellar and finish. We know all that. Okay, um, I, I did read an article um, in a National Geographic magazine I have from 1980, and the, the old brewmaster was talking about how they used Carlsberg yeast, and it gave Paps kind of a wine flavor. But then, huh. I did, yeah, and then I did some other reading though. But they said Carlsberg yeast is basically just lager yeast. So I don't know if I don't I don't know if that was a particular type of Carlsberg yeast. It was just some Paps house brand. But um, um, anyway, uh, the the IBUs are low on this beer. Um, Y'all ready to crack it open? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a Paps chalice here. Uh, this goes into the Miller Lite uh, Boston Celtics glass that's got the etching on the bottom. It says Miller Lite. I'm actually pouring mine in, a, in, a, in, a, in an old school frosty mug. Oh, that is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, straight down the middle. Now, when Paps came out in 1844, there weren't many uh, Pilsner beers around. You know, that's basically when it first was invented in the 1840s. And uh, <coughs> it did become the number one beer brand in America for a good while. But then it lost that position. I believe it was 1957 when it lost its number one position to, to uh, Budweiser. And then it kind of like slowly went down... Yeah. And so it hit rock bottom in around the year 2000. <laughs> I know it's a lot of people in my age range. I'm 26. I know it's a lot of people in my age range drinking this stuff. It's I think it's like it's got to be about uh, 10.99 for 18 of them. So go figure why everybody in my age range is drinking them. Yeah, they got them uh, uh, for that price around here too. Sometimes 9.99 for um, 18 pack. Uh, you can't, can't buy them 18 pack here. It's only buy a 30 pack. Oh, okay. uh, be it, right? Six pack or twelve pack. What's the price there? Uh, seventeen dollars for a thirty pack. That's yeah, that's average. Yep. Economy beer. Um, what what do y'all get on the aroma? Sweet corn. Uh, got that grainy, light grainy malt. Vegetables, yeah. maybe cooked vegetables. Uh, yeah, some grains and corn. I mean, that, yeah. Sweet grain. I, I'm just picking up basically sweet, indistinguishable grain myself. But sweetness, yeah. you know, it, it's like your stereotypical beer. Yeah, I'll give it props. It's got a little bit of a. It's got. A, it's got a light multi presence. Very, very light. Uh, yeah, I go along with that. Uh -huh. Sure. Definitely uh, luggies. What happened? It, it's kind of interesting because Pap's demise actually be, was part of its rebirth because. And 14 years ago, it was so low down, the company had sold all its breweries to Miller, turned over some of its brands to Miller, right. uh, started letting all of its beer be contracted by Miller, and then they were just selling it at rock-bottom prices, right? But 
all the hipsters, so-called, and all the other people that don't want to spend a lot started buying it. And then they noticed that their sales went up. Like, the less advertising they did, the more sales they got. So Although now, I, I still don't notice advertising with this beer either, so, you know, no, so I'm, no, I'm getting some kind of word of mouth. No television advertising, but you do have radio and a lot of point of sale, like at the bars. Right. Um, and now it's a really popular brand again. Of course, the price went up again. <laughs> but like, like I was telling you last week down here in Louisville, uh, it's, it's a big beer in a lot of the little... Uh, nice spots down here. I mean, that's it's a big seller. Yeah, same thing in New Orleans. Uh, you can go to uh, Carrollton Station or one of those other bars, and they'll have it on tap. Usually about two dollars for a big pint glass. And uh, I went to Denver in 1999 when I was waiting in Denver for the bus. Uh, I drank two of them, and they were a dollar a piece. Wow. Yeah, big pints. It was really good, though. It's better on draft, of course, but that's pretty much anything, I guess. Absolutely. What about the taste? Let's see. Eric, is it pretty uh, popular up there in Massachusetts? Yeah, everybody in my age range is drinking this thing. It's, like I said, ten ninety nine for an 18-pack. People drink this, or um, I'm trying to think of another big beer that people are drinking. Well, everybody's drinking uh, Yingling now because it finally came back to Massachusetts, so everybody's drinking Yingling. Yeah, that's still being uh, kept out of Louisiana, I hate to tell you. Yeah. See, we can't get it here in Indiana either. Mm -hmm. I'm raising. We only get the we only get the the lager, the light lager, and the black and tan. I wish we got the porter so I could tell what that tasted like. What? The black and tan, the light, and the Yingling lager. Those oh, are the only. Yeah, yeah. I, get. I wish I had the lo the uh, the porter to try that. You don't get the Lower Chesterfield ale. Never seen it. Oh, it's it's fine. I think um, it's a cream ale. Um, I would have to drive 125 to 30 miles to get any Yingling. Wow. No joke. They it's, weren't, it's about two hours from here for we can get any Yingling. Probably, hmm. You had to go to Cincinnati to get Yingling. Yeah. Right. Well, back to Paps. Um, All right. It has won awards, okay? it's it. You know, you, there's no use even mentioning Beer Advocate and Rape Beer. You know what they're going to say about it. Oh, they're going to dog it up, you know. Yeah. Hey, it's you know. I didn't even look. I didn't even look. I said I know it's going to be something terrible. <laughs> I didn't even look. Be honest with you. But it's won gold medals many times at the Great American Beer Festival for the style. Some, you know, that's a problem with some people. They don't grasp style. Uh, it won a gold a medal just two years ago. Yeah. And um, it, it didn't win a gold medal for. It didn't win best in show. But it won a gold medal in the style, American style lager. So, I would say that in that style of beer, this is really a good one. It's it, it actually has to me just like in the smell. I mean, you may have to pull it out and smell a little bit, but it definitely has that faint kind of a, a kind of a sweet malty taste that you almost get from, say, a Miller Light or a Miller High Life, which is why I think I like some of the Miller products. They have a little bit of that. Um, rich multi taste. Yeah, and and um, there's a slight hot bitterness to balance it. I mean, slight. You know, I mean, the IBUs must be what twelve, but twelve. And I, I bet you're not that high. Ten. I would say at least ten, though. Maybe yeah. I, I would say twelve. That's my guess, twelve, because I'm noticing a little hop note, a little one. You know, if you get if you get a ten IBUs or below, you really cannot. Pick up. Nothing. You don't know exactly where the bitterness is coming from at that low of an IBU. If it's some kind of a green or the yeah. hot self. Um. In the aftertaste. Very dry. When I'm yeah, and when I'm exhaling and all, I'm picking up that corn. Yeah, the corn's when you exhale. Yeah, I mean it's corn a stuff. very, it's a, it's a medium body, very very medium body beer. I think. I mean. I would say it's light body. <clears throat> Not really. I would light to medium, maybe to most. It has some body. It's not just yeah. like bush beer, you know, with no body. But um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a uh, a malt liquor body, but it's definitely oh, no. slightly lighter than it's, it's to me. It's slightly lighter than even a Budweiser, and that's even a pretty light beer. Yeah, Budweiser is crisper than this. 
that's, yeah. that's coming from that rice. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I I don't have a problem with Paps. I mean, I'm not like in love with it. You know, Tom Beer right. Whisper. Tom Beer Whisper was telling me he said, well, to him it's too sweet. He just can't. He he doesn't care for the corn syrup. Um, I don't. I told him I said it didn't bother me, but um, right. I can understand that it would, you know, bother some people. But uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, Paps Light. Now that's kind of a more of a rarity. I don't. See I've it. never seen that, and PBR is big in my area. Like I said, I've never seen that. I've seen. Paps I've, always, Light. I've always seen the PBR Light one time. Uh, maybe it was discontinued. Uh, I know as recently as last year, I was reading about. Paps Light on the Paps website, but they reformatted it, uh, and I don't see they're not talking about Paps Light now. I just I just don't see how you how uh, the brewery how uh, Miller could properly um, advertise and promote a light version of an already pretty light beer. I don't see how that would work well, very well. Uh, it, it, it 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 does it. They do it. Um, really? Yeah. When I've driven around, I've seen Paps. Blue huh. River Light many times. It's been on the market for 40 years or uh, 35 years. But uh, they used to have something called – they used to have some really strange Paps beers back in the eight, 90s. Like um, looking over there in my collection, Paps Ice. Yeah. Paps Ice. So they made a Paps Extra Light too. Oh, man. I love <laughs> Why? Extra Light. And Paps Genuine Draft. I have a can of Paps Genuine Draft. And I tell you, though, but back in the late 90s, when yeah. I would buy Paps and all these other off-the-wall Paps beers, people would look at me like I was out of my mind. <laughs> They're like, why are you buying Paps? I said, oh, well, I like it, you know. And I, I'm i kind of like a geek for brands. You know, like, it's almost like I like the brand more than the beer, like the history yeah. of it, the, the, the label designs and all that. You know, I'm kind of like into all of that. I mean, you can kind of tell, even if you I'm didn't know even if you didn't know that Pabst Blue Ribbon had been bought out by Miller, you can kind of tell it's got that same grainy and almost like that same corny taste, that corny taste, that a lot of the uh, Miller beers seem to have in common with each other. But wait, Eric, it wasn't bought out by Miller now. It wasn't. No, Pabst is still owned by the Metropolis family. Now, what happened was... Oh. No. Yeah, what happened was Pabst... Uh, Many many decades ago, the Paps the Paps family sold the company, and um, this this entrepreneur kind of um, I don't know what you call him a corporate raider. He uh, this guy uh, his name was Paul Kalmanowitz. He bought Paps, and and basically he started doing this in the in the sixties, going around buying up struggling beer companies. The first thing they did was they. This is kind of what hurt Paps because they bought Blatt's beer in 19, the late 50s, Blatt's, because Blatt's was kind of going downhill, so Paps bought Blatt's. But the U.S. government said they were trying to be a monopoly, and they wouldn't allow it. And it, went in the, it was in court for years. Right. It hurt Paps, and finally they were allowed to, to own Blatt's, which they still own Blatt's. Then they went and bought up Falstaff. They bought up uh, Old English Malt Liquor. They just went around. From the 50s to today, buying up little struggling beer companies, okay? And they had this huge portfolio of beers that hardly anybody bought. That was the problem, though. You know, it was like, um, and, and so Paps today owns this huge portfolio of beer brands, and they, they've dropped a lot of them. They got rid of Falstaff. They got rid of uh, a bunch of their malt liquors last year. So I don't know how well that's been working, but they do have a major... Portfolio now, but what happened in 1999 was Paps bought Stroh's. Okay. All right. And I think Miller was about to come in and buy them all, buy the whole thing. Right. And at the time, Miller was Philip Morris. Okay. And they had the money to do it, but I think they were worried about antitrust pro problems. The U.S. government coming in and saying, No, 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 Miller ain't gonna buy Paps and Stroh's. So what Miller and Paps did was they said, fine, we won't be the same company, but we'll just work as though we are. In other words, Paps turned over all their breweries to Miller, mm -hmm. gave some of their brands to Miller, or sold them, I don't know, Old English, gotcha. Mick, Old English Mickeys and Hams. Miller, right. was hot. Miller was hot to get a hold of Hams, Old English, and Mickeys, okay? Hams is a big, big, big one around here now. 
Yeah, it's nothing here because it doesn't exist in Louisiana. I don't see that thing here. But Mickey's is, Mickey's is a steady seller here, and uh, Old English is huge here. Yeah. yeah. So Miller got a hold of that, and then Miller made a deal where they would they would brew most, not all, not all, but most of Paps beers, and it's good for Paps because they don't have to run any breweries, and uh, it's sort of like they're not the same company officially, but they are in practice. Right. Okay. So there I go with the Paps history. All right. Okay. So I hope you found that interesting and not boring. No, it's very interesting. But uh, it kind of made us re revitalization about that last Clint Eastwood movie, didn't it? Well, that's about the time it started coming well, back. Yeah because, yeah, because in the 2000s, Paps became like the hip thing, right? Yeah. And maybe it goes back to 1986 with the uh, David Lynch movie Blue Velvet. Yeah. Which <laughs> I uh, suggest. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I like Heineken, Heineken, Paps, Blue Ribbon. Yeah, he didn't want to drink Heineken. He wanted yeah. to, he, he, you know, he said uh, something like, uh, I reject that item. <laughs> right. Pat's Blue Ribbon. But, um, Dennis Hopper. That's right. And um, Patrick Swayze starred in a PBR commercial back in 1979. You know, but anyway, um, I don't know how it could get such low ratings, you know, it scores. It's, it's nothing bad. Now, I think it's even, no, let me, let me. Back up. I'm actually sitting here on Beer Advocate right now looking at it. Have what do you, you see? Beer Advocate, uh, the, the, it's, Beer Advocate scores 69, and the, and, the bros, and the bros give it an 83. So what, no. are, the, what, are, the, what are the words? Uh, you know, they, it's like 69 is what, poor? Poor, 83 is good. So the bros say it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you ever notice, the bros are pretty fair about stuff. They really like slits. Yeah. Um, Ray Beer, they hate everything that's American macro. You know, it's like they, this guy down in Texas that does beer video reviews, he, he makes some really good comments about that. He said, if it's American made macro, automatically they hate it. It don't matter what American macro companies do. If they make it, they hate it as a matter of course, which I have a problem with because then you're starting to uh, have all this bias and stuff. And yeah, I am not, let me say it like this I am not fixated that's a good word I'm not fixated upon American macro beers yeah. I have no horse in the race right but on the other hand I drink those kind of beers all the time I, like I drink craft beers a lot if people watch my video reviews they might notice that I drink an enormous amount of craft beer also so I don't have a horse in the race either way. Now, Eric, you and I did a collaboration a while back with uh, uh, Miller. Uh, Miller, Gen our genuine draft. And that's the same alcohol uh, level, 4.7. It's hard to say which one is better, though, right? Right. Um, I seem to think that in terms, and I think you maybe mentioned it, that I seem to think in terms of a lot of other macro style beers, this one does have a this one does have a little bit more of a sweet overall flavor than I would say that the genuine draft does, which may turn some people off to the beer, but I think it's I think it finishes so clean and it dries so quickly that the sweetness isn't cloying and it doesn't stay around all that long to be annoying. No, I don't think so either. And and, and I know what John's gonna say. You could drink this thing it was going out of style, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, I'm going to drink the PBR well over top of the Miller Genuine Draft anytime. Oh, yeah? I would yeah. say for me it would be a tie um, because I like both of those beers, and um, mm -hmm. I could kind of look at both of those and kind of appreciate them. So I can't really, in on, all honesty, say I would choose Paps over <clears throat> Miller Genuine Draft, but I would say that if I was shopping, I would just look at whatever was cheaper. You know it's going to be cheaper. Right. Um, PBR comes in so many different packages, though. If you look at their website, Draft, 12-ounce, 16-ounce, 24-ounce, 32-ounce cans. I've never seen a 32-ounce can. 12-ounce mm -hmm. bottles. Well, I see, those <laughs> I see those everywhere. Yep. Here's a neat one, though. This is a 12-ounce bottle I bought in 1997, and it has a little paper ribbon on it. Huh. Kind of like that. Yeah, I've not seen one of them for years. Uh, 22 ounce bottles, never seen that. 32 ounce bottles, I may have seen those. 40 ounce bottles, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a 40 ounce. I get, we get 40 ounces all the time around here. 
in Massachusetts. Say, I can buy a 40 ounce of Lowell, but you can't over here. You mean a PBR of any beer? PBR. Yeah, we get 40 ounce bottles of a lot of beers, but Paps ain't one of them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, she's 21 years old, and she's been doing video reviews with me since she was 18. But she said that Paps Blue Ribbon is one of the big time beers over at the University of New Orleans. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I believe it. That I, see people, that I see people my age range drinking this stuff and natural ice. Yeah, natural, that's the big beers in my age natural, range. Natural light, but natural ice is a big one too. <laughs> yep, that seems <laughs> that seems to have a comeback a little bit. Natural ice, I don't understand that, but it seems to a little bit in my age range. I'm glad you mentioned that. Now, what were you going to say? Because I'm going to come back to that in a minute. What did you say, John? I said natural natural lights kind of made a comeback around here. Yeah, natural light. Because a natural brand seems to. It's a it's it's a sixteen dollar thirty pack. It's 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 an affordable thirty. Pack. Uh, oh yeah, they got natural light, which people buy. I, I work I work part time at a grocery store, and people buy that stuff like it is. They just buy. I saw a lady buying today. They just buy natural light like mad, like they're crazy, like they just buy, <laughs> buy, buy, yeah. buy. That's why it's one of the top. I think one of the top five brands in the country. Um, yeah. Then they made natural ice, which is a really strong, kind of strong lager. Mm -hmm. um, and then they got the Natty Daddy. Oh, that's right. Eight percent. What you know about that? Yeah. <laughs> that's too strong for me because you know you drink one of those. If you drink one Natty Daddy, twenty-four ounce can, you are going to be just eight percent. Yeah. Hammered. Yeah. I drank a 16 ounce Schlitz VSL yesterday, and I was thinking, "Oh man, <laughs> I wanted to go splash my face with water." It was like profound. Yeah. It was profound. But um, and, and, and that's probably why people on Beer Advocate would say, "Well, if I'm gonna drink a beer that's got a lot of alcohol in it, then I'd rather you know spend the the quality money on drinking what I like instead of buying all these beers at a low price and with low ingredient with low." You know, made made uh, ingredients to make a low grade product. Why would I buy that if I could just buy the good beer at a better price for you know a better taste? Some people would say that. That's what beer advocate would probably say about a beer like this. Why do that? Yeah, but um, th there's a lot of validity in that statement. Why buy a cheap beer when you could buy a really expensive beer? Well, the the point is that a lot of the cheap beers are pretty good. <laughs> Yep. That's my opinion. They taste pretty good to me now. I agree with that, yeah, absolutely. I make, enemies, I make enemies saying that, but I mean, I, I and I want to bring this up too. I bought a six-pack of Schlitz. Man, I like Schlitz. Um, and, 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 and as we wrap this up, let me say this. Would would Paps Blue Ribbon be a beer that you would do, call a, and Tom Beer Whisperer does this, a buy again? Sure. I'd buy it. I've bought yes. it over and over and over. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'd bring I'll buy I'll buy a thirty pack, a, a couple thirty packs a month. I mean, I, I mean yeah, it's 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 a beer I'm gonna keep buying. Yeah, it's a it's what I call one of those standby beers. Yeah. In the fridge, you're eating a ham sandwich, so you pop open a Paps Blue Ribbon. Yeah. Multi-purpose. Yeah, you're not gonna sit there and think about it too deeply, but you know it's kind of fun to drink. So hey, we're having fun. So, but now I have the, I've always rolling these things around in my head, right? So. I'm thinking about the next examination. What do you, and I'm trying to get the old Milwaukee, John. I just don't want to buy a case of it, but I'm trying to get. Well, yeah, I did. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'll do whatever you want to get if I can get it. How <laughs> about these? Let me let me mention some of these brands, and y'all tell me yes or no. Okay. Schlitz. I can do Schlitz. Uh, Schlitz or Schlitz Gusto. Well, that's the only yeah. one. That's the only one they have now. Then yes, all right. You cool with that? You cool with that? Yeah, I'm good with it. Uh, I'm gonna run another brand in front of you. Natural Ice, since we mentioned it. Yeah, I, I think I can get it. I can try. I'd buy a Tall Boy to to, to examine. Yeah. John, let me know about that Natural Ice because um, that's sort of like one of my little um favorite beers. Okay. Well, so, let's let's do the slits though for sure. And let me examine the uh, natural ice because I'm going to Louisville uh, on a beer hunt uh, Wednesday, so I will let me look down there. 
Yeah, and, and there's so many what you called, I think you used the term legacy brands. Yeah. There's so many of those legacy brands you could look at, you'd never run out. No. And, uh, and people might notice, the, the viewers might notice, John, myself, Eric, others, we've never said these are world-class beers. No. But sometimes, sometimes, I think I said this last time, sometimes you just want to watch a Godzilla movie. Yes. <laughs> you know, you don't want to watch... Uh, What's a what's a uh, Citizen Kane or um, the Fall of the House of Usher or um, the Man Who Shot Liberty Balance? You just want to watch something that doesn't require a whole lot of thought. Yeah. And sometimes you want to drink something that doesn't. Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was a great thing to say because Pabst Blue Ribbon is sort of like Smokey and the Bandit or uh, Coors Light or Coors Beer. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, I mean, the, the thing about it is, I mean, anybody can go out and buy a, a, a $14, $15 four pack of craft beer, but not everybody's going to go out and buy a, a $17, 30 pack of PBR. Exactly. You know, I mean. Like, I, like John said, like John said, he wants to talk about beers that nobody's talking about. Yeah. Everybody's talking about, um, Dogfish had 120, and that's good. It's good to talk about that. I tried to get it like crazy last year and couldn't find it. Couldn't well, find. I it. mean, are you going to give 12 or 13 dollars for a 12 ounce bottle? I'm not. I yeah, might just one. one. I uh, paid 85 dollars. I paid 85 dollars for a six pack of West Latron 12. I mm. give I give 90 dollars for a 12 pack, and I got or for a six pack, and I've got. I, I've got a barrel load of brand new sitting out of my basement right now. I give a lot Ooh. for so. Yeah. So you know, it's like it, it, you got to kind of look at these things in perspective. Yeah. Yep. And I and I like to talk to you and Eric because y'all and Tom too because you can look at it with in, in a certain perspective. You know, it's not. What do I say? What, what, a good thing I, I think that to say is it doesn't have to be everything or nothing. Yeah. Right. These kind of beers have definitely have their place in the beer drinking community, and it's not. And and, and, and like you said, it doesn't have to. It, 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 it's not. It's not, and it doesn't have to be designed and intended for. Um, you know, a lot of heavy thought process into it. it. It's designed to have it with your buddies, drink it when you just want something cold, and that's obviously the beer's ideal purpose. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, right. if you're looking at it as you, if you're looking at it as something being more world class or something being a little bit more refined, then you're really just with the style of light lagers, uh, malt liquors, and American adjunct lagers. You're looking at it the whole wrong way, and you're losing the intent of why the beer is the beer itself. Exactly. Yes, you're uh, exactly right. Right. You're 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 not grasping the plot of the film. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, let's let's end this, and I, we'll all give our final thoughts. So, uh, Eric, you joined us today, so you go first because you're farthest east anyway. All right, I will give this a out of five. I will give this a three point five. It is definitely a good beer. It's definitely an above average for the style. It's nothing wrong, nothing harsh. It's a little sweet, but it does have a little bit of a malty taste. So I like it as far as. Um, adjunct bloggers are concerned. Okay, so you would say it's a good beer, and um, yes, very good. Okay, beer. and John, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the same thing I give it on Untapped. I'm gonna give it a 3.75. I th I think I think the beer's there. The point of what this beer is is, is there. The, the the body of the beer, the color of the beer, the taste of it, the sweetness, the corn, the malt, everything. To me, this here is what. That's an American beer right there. And, yeah, then, and let me say this. Let me say this. This right here is, is uh, to me, th this is what started the craft beer revolution. Beers like this. That's right. And I'll say that um, it's a good, reliable beer. You're never going to get one that's off or foul or infected and all that bull. Um, no. People that say it's a bad beer, I mean, for real, come on, man! It's not a bad beer. You could say it's average, or it's ordinary, or it's run of the mill. All of those things. I mean, hell, excuse my language. 
Paps Blue Ribbon basically says that. But if you're going to eat some uh, popcorn or you're going to go to a barbecue and you bring Paps, I don't think anybody's going to complain except maybe you know a beer snob might be at the event and everybody else will be saying, oh, Lord, here we go. Yeah. But, uh, to say that it's a zero out of 100 and all of that kind of stuff, that's a joke. It doesn't even have flavor at that point. It's got a flavor that either isn't even there or it's it will um, make you sick by instant sip. I don't yeah. think it does that. Beer, yeah, if a, beer, yeah. if a beer is a zero out of 100, you cannot drink it. I promise you that. You know, I've drank this beer for a number of years, probably like you have too, Jay. And you know what? The, the consistency and the taste of this beer from now to what it is right now to 20 years ago is the same thing. And never you, changed. And you, never you, changed. Can go, you can go today and buy a, a beer, and you can go two weeks from now and buy the same beer, and the consistency of that beer is going to change so much. I bought Pops Blue Ribbon starting in February 96, and it has not changed. It's, it's tasting so good. Beer. Eric's drank another one. Um, so anyway... <laughs> I think we're going to look at Paps next week. I mean, <laughs> Schlitz the next time we get together, whether whenever that is. So thank you, viewers, for watching. and We appreciate it. And y'all have a good night. Have a good one. Keep tasting those great beers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, folks.